And they've been a very strong contender in the LST so far. Well, let's take a look here as we get set for our first ban in pick phase. For our first match of the night, Arm Project going to be on your blue side. We have Detonator on the red. We'll see how things pan, pan out here. We'll see whether or not Armor Project you know, wants to try and get rid of that pike that we've seen Rich bring out multiple times. We'll see how teams want to adapt here. Because like I mentioned, very important matchup for Armor Project. Equally as important too for Detonator. You don't want to be given up it's, this series. It's essentially a must win for Armor Project if they want to keep their hopes in the LST alive. Going down 0-4 almost... Sorry, going down 0-4 means that it's no longer in Armor Project's hands mm -hmm. to qualify for playoffs. Uh, it's going to take a... It's going to take a lot for them in order to get back into the LST to try and make it towards playoffs mm -hmm. if they don't win here today. Because yeah. then it's going to take, you know, those scenarios of, oh, we have to continue winning every game, and then three teams above have to drop every other game as well, and our project have to continue winning. And they haven't looked too good here, our project. So they really need to pick it up. Uh, this would be a good win for them. Detonator are not one of the best teams in the LST, but they're not bad either. They've been improving every single game that we've watched Detonator so far. So a win here for Armor Project means, hey, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the middle of the pack, and if we get a few more of those wins, suddenly we can tie up with Detonator in terms of their score, mm -hmm. try and force tiebreakers, try and force our way into playoffs. Whereas for Detonator, this has become a must-win. This has become, if we win this one, we are one game away from securing a playoff spot, and that is crucial for Detonator. You see here for Armor Project, it doesn't help them out. They did actually end up losing a ban. What have they done this time? Uh, possibly, you know, coming in maybe a little bit late, didn't make that check-in time. Hey, they were in the lobby, what happened? Ah, oh. I don't know, man. They do have to be here before a certain point. True. Like, How dare they? You know, you can't come in like a couple seconds before you're actually supposed to start picking back. At least they have not punished themselves like Insurgent did. Yeah, well, you know, Insurgent, they... Self-punishment. Self-punishment. <laughs> that was great. I'm interested here for Armor Project, whether or not they're going to try and ban out the Pike, because oftentimes we see people against Detonator in that first rotation ban out the Pike. There it is, so Rich will not have that. He was in our top three, actually, from last week on the pick, so he's not going to be able to have that here in game one. For Detonator now, what do they want to leave open and eh. possibly pick up twice? I don't know about banning away Rich's Pike. I know, it's, there was a couple times flashy. he looked good. It's and flashy, then... but he almost <laughs> threw the game twice. <laughs> so I think that, you know, if someone... It's like saying Uzi's a really good Ezreal. But <laughs> but there'll be twice in the game where he just arcane shifts into your entire team. And then the rest of the game, he's just the best Ezreal in the world. I don't know. I would take the twice in a, in a game chance that he's going to arcane shift into the team and just punish him for it. Ooh. Armor Project here. Do they go ahead and pick up this Tristana that we saw yesterday? They are Tristana players, so we know Sega can play at top lane. I believe Henry can play it in the mid lane, and White Wing can play the champion too. So I would like to see this as a flex pick. It's such a cool flex pick too, because if you think about bottom lane flex picks, there haven't been many. Lucian was one of the original ones where he could go top, mid, AD carry. Vayne, you know, was a flex between top and bottom for a very short amount of time. Uh, and then all the other flex picks you see in the bottom lane are things like Cassiopeia, Swain, all those mage carries who can flex here and there. So I like that Tristana now has a new position where mm -hmm. she can flex as a late game hyper carry in the bottom lane, or even an early game bully, that can transition into a hyper game, a, a late game carry. But the problem with Tristana is you really need to build around her composition, and there's just certain comps that she doesn't do well against, especially with things like Kakali, who can go toe to toe against her in burst. And if you get a jungler like Elise, Olaf, suddenly that top lane Tristana pick, although it has the safety of the jump, still a long lane. It's still a long way to go, and still a very squishy champion to run. Yeah, especially with that mu much mobility and equally the slows, if you're able to just hit one of these axes here from Sake, you're going to do yourself a pretty good time here. You see that Olaf currently sits at an 80% win rate as far as the LST summer goes, oftentimes being banned out. Along that, we're going to have the Akali, like you mentioned earlier, so still has a sustain in lane, but maybe Armor Project, they say, all right, we don't like that matchup already. Let's go ahead, throw the Tristana elsewhere, and maybe pick up this Renekton that, again, could be flexed around. You could see Renekton in the mid lane. There's still a lot of questionable variables up. Yeah, I mean, I think it was Doinby who really started popularizing bruises in the mid lane, but Sega, one of his comfort picks is Renekton top. So, again, they're still flexing here, 
You've got Trisana and Renekton who can fulfill, I mean, Trisana can fulfill three different roles, mm -hmm. Renekton can fulfill, fulfill two different roles, unless you're going Yumi Garen. Um, but we'll, <laughs> we'll just have to see. Because with this Braum pick, uh, Armor Project are basically flexing and say, you know what, Detonator, you can either take the Tristana, take the Tristana on in the solo lane, but even if you don't, and we decide to throw this bot side, you need to be careful on what you pick, because Tristana Braum is a kill lane. Yeah, because you have amount of, the amount of range you just inherently have. It's rather easy to just you know proc those winter bike, uh, the, the frost there it's, coming out from the Braum. It's more of the leap combo. Mm. So Trisana Alistar is the original kill lane on the bottom side of the map, where Alistar going headbutt, pulverize. Trisana jumps in, too much burst, too much power, too much crowd control. Braum Trisana is the opposite. <clears throat> Trisana jumps in first, gets the slow. Braum follows through for the extra resistances and puts up the shields. So Trisana then becomes a very tanky. And then they can follow up with the Winter's Bite Crowd Control later. So it's just a reverse. Damage first, mm. Crowd Control later, instead of Crowd Control first, Damage later. Uh, it's a very strong kill lane in the bottom side of the map. We, we've we seen things like, you know, Thresh, Tristana, uh, you know, Tristana Yumi being used as kill lanes, bottom side of the map. Lots of different combos there. It just forces Detonator to alter their draft around this powerful pick of Tristana. Like this here from Detonator, though, with that Braum being shown already by Armored Project, get rid of something that's synergize as well with it and take it onto your side. You're going to go with the Lucian. There still was, though, like the Sivir and, you know, some other, you know, higher valuable picks that we've been seeing. So interesting that they actually just go ahead and take away the Lucian. But I like this because now you look at it, you put your sign top side, the threat of Olaf Akali's there. You put her bottom side of the map. Lucian is very good at dealing with Trisana because you can dash away from the rocket jump, mm -hmm. create space. So dashing away from rocket jump means you're going to deny the damage that comes out from rocket jump. You're not going to get slowed and you immediately get your passive proc as Lucian, so you distribute damage right away. Putting Trisana in a very tricky situation. Um, this means that now Detonator are not too afraid of that Trisana pick. However, now Armor Project, they need to rotate their draft accordingly. Are you still going to run this solo lane? Are you now just going to put a bottom lane and say, hey, White Wing, your scaling is a hyper carry. Instead, we're not going to go for a kill lane, especially mm -hmm. with the lore lane of Thresh being picked up as well. Very difficult to try and go for a kill lane down there. So I have to see how Armor Project now react. I think there's a really good call out from Detonator protecting their top side and bottom side. You can see that top side, Ooh. first two picks, bottom side, second two picks. So just protecting those champions, saying, <laughs> now we can just get a good control mage in the mid lane for Archony and hope Trisana doesn't go there. Meanwhile, though, we see our first Skarder coming out here in the Ska. summer sport. Going to be likely coming through the jungle for Alves. We did see the Sejuani, the Elise, and the Gragas being banned out here. And Silas also going to be the final pickup for the side of Armor Project. Interesting to see a Skarner, though. I like this draft coming out from Armor Project so far. Uh, I want to I want to know if Armor Project have drafted themselves into a bit of a sticky situation here, though, because mm -hmm. Skarner does do okay early game, but relies a lot on crowd control at level 6, which right, uh, Olaf doesn't care about. Um, so I feel like they could have had a more bruiser-heavy jungler. Even running Silas in the jungle here, I thought would have been better and throwing control mage in the mid lane. The one thing that the Drusana pick had still up its sleeve is that it could be run into the mid lane against like an Azir or a Corky and just blow them away in the early game. Um, but they have reacted in this draft quite well. I like the Detonator put Zoe in the mid lane, gives them that pick potential, top side of the map as well as some engage potential, thanks to Sleepy Trouble Bubble. But very good drafting for both these teams. Yeah, can see uh, again the Lucian Thresh. We haven't seen too much Thresh coming out here in the LST. I'm excited though to see a Skarner finally hit our region. We've seen it in a couple of different regions here in the last couple of weeks. Now making its first appearance in the LST. Though we're gonna go ahead and load up into the Rift for Game One on Project Eon on Detonator. Start off our Saturday. gonna say that Lucian skin's got a weird home guard an animation from a different camera angle. <laughs> Is that the new Project Akali? Yeah. Looks it kind of looks like uh, the Nightblade Aurelia. Looks weird. She looks a little almost too angsty anime for me. I don't like the Project skins very much. 
I didn't like this year's that much. I didn't like any of them actually. I like I the, the o- I like the OG like first four. I like those, like the Echo and the Master Yi and Yasuo hey. skins. I don't know. I liked I, I like the theme. I just don't like the style of skins. I wasn't too happy Jinx got a skin in the project line. Why? Because that like it, it felt like there could have been other champions for that. I like don't know. Who? She's already got really good skins. But like who would you put as a project champion? Uh, Reddington? Yes. Project me. Crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> also using the worst Reddington skin. Million. No, no hot, bad buds at SKT or anything, but Outback Croc is the only competitive Crocodile skin, and people should respect that. Personally, I thought he just looked a little too goofy with a headset on him. Uh, just If you're going to run Croc, it's Outback Croc or nothing. Steve <laughs> Owen told us one thing. We'll see here. We already got K Star and Rich already getting decently aggressive here. Denied a decent chunk. This is also the the wrong Braum skin, the wrong Chroma being used. Hello, you have to go for the absolute. I can't say these words on broadcast. What's a nice word for the the pink Braum? Oh, pink Braum? Like the pink Chroma of this. He looks like an absolute boss. Okay. Like he looks like a mafia lord or something. That's, That's like the, the whole right point. One. It's Vault Breaker Rob. Yeah, but this one's just like, meh. I see he's not menacing at all. He's just taking damage for free. He is going against 100% wife steal lane. But Potato making mistakes already. Not putting up the shield there. Must have taken Q and E first. I feel like oh. you take E very early on. Mm. So you take, uh, must have taken Q and W early on. I feel like you meant to take E in this lane because Thresh and Lucian are going to push in against you no matter what level two. Having that damage reduction is always going to help. Uh, no Ignite here for Henry, so he won't be able to finish off the kill. Still decent trades coming out from both mid laners. Zoe has a hard time in this matchup very early on just because Henry has a lot of sustain, good crowd control, and no way for Zoe to really dodge out from that besides a good sleepy trouble bubble. Look at that. Rich is just playing this very well, understanding he's got the bottom side control, so k could just farm, but he just fishes for hooks. Not throwing out the hook here is more beneficial than actually using it, because the threat of having that crowd control is more important. Keeps White Wing at bay, keeps Potato even further bar far behind. That's a four, a three and a half minute turret plating. On top of that, too, up. because of the Tristana early on, if you kill one minion, it really can be very hard to farm underneath the turret this early on in the game, especially you if you don't have the relic procs. Yep. You need to start poking down those minions around this area in the wave in order to farm effectively on the turret as Tristana. Oh, Look at no. this. Very nice from Rich. Oh, nicely done. Gets another quick chain there. And that's what I mean. So you hold on to the hook when you're in this position because you're already so far underneath the turret. If Rich... Oh, White Wing. If Rich was to throw a wild hook and fish for a you know a CC onto White Wing or Potato, both of them have the maneuverability, the, the distance as well as the abilities to m move away from that crowd control, and that's a significant chunk to use. But holding onto it means you threaten Potato to dance around. You can't really protect White Wing and can't stack up, and it also means if he steps too far forward trying to get into a better position, your flay is going to pull him backwards. You're going to deal a lot of damage, and then the secondary hook can come out and try and get some good bursts in the bottom lane. So Rich is really playing this Thresh pick very well on the bottom side of the map. They've also denied two waves of minions already from this Tristana. Oh, and Potato, you got to be careful. Rich, ah, just a little too trigger happy, it seems. And this is what we kind of expect from the Danator combo. Look uh, at top lane. Sega uh, just Sega? took a turret hit. Oh, Sega, I think you went too far. That's going to force out the flash. That's a misplay coming out from Colon Feet. The Shuriken Toss does move you backwards, so it mm. would have been much better if you was able to get in front to guarantee that Shuriken Toss, because that would have been a free kill. Shuriken Toss follow up into auto attack. Would have been a good kill into Rennington, but blows the flash, so you still be pretty, fairly happy with that. Colon Feet, though, did just go back to base, so you won't actually have this teleport to match, and Sega's going to get a free push back into the tower, and that should equalize at least the minion difference that uh, Sega was missing out on. Take a look back here into the mid lane. Zoe and the Silas still pretty dead even here as far as CS goes. We do see at least a decent hook coming back again from Rich and Potato has to put up that shield, but already the damage came through. Yeah, you need to be able to do that a little bit earlier because as the frontline Braum, if you're going to allow White Wing to have safety in his positioning, you need to not only tank the flay, but also put up the shield right before you get flayed so that when the hook comes through, it doesn't do that much damage. K-Star can't follow up that effectively. 
Could be much better. Oh, second just uses dash. Both oh, of his is. dashes. Both dashes being used. That's going to be the call. Here comes the Olaf from the river. Sega pops the Dominus. Cold feet just going to keep him at arm's reach, and that's going to allow the rest of the kill to follow on through. I'm going to give it on over to Cold and Feet. First blood onto the Akali. Yeah, Cold Feet could have done a few things there, you know, farming up the minions instead just to get level six a bit quicker on Akali, but still very well played. Stays back. Allows Olaf to do what he does best. And they waited for him to use that double dash because Sega was level 6. And got that free kill top side of the map. So the burnt flash earlier coming out from Akali. He's able to pick him up first blood in the top lane. And with a 10 CS lead, this should start to turn into Colden's feet lane. Akali is not the best teleporting top laners. You can contribute to these early fights because you mm. are an assassin getting to the back lines. It means you can pick up a nice and early kill. But getting a lead top lane is even more beneficial. Because now Colden feet can punish this lane, especially with Akali's build path going towards Hextech Gunblade first. You'll have good sustain in the top lane, good burst damage, and Sega with the ultimate down, with the flash down, with teleport down, is going to have a hard time dealing with this top lane. Meanwhile, though, down toward the bot side, Alvaz was able to finally hit level 6, so we'll see the Skarner start making appearances, hopefully, on the map. Look at mid lane here, though. We got Henry getting pretty aggressive. What Ignite. was that? Was being popped already. What was that? How did Henry get on top of the... Oh, he used the... He stole the ultimate. Yeah. <laughs> what did I just watch? Surprise. Why, why would Teleporting you Teleporting Henry. Take sex ultimate for all I care. <laughs> like, why would you... Goodness sake. Zoe's ultimate is probably the worst ultimate for a Silas to steal. One of. It's high up there. What else is bad? Udir? Do you just get Phoenix stance? I can't remember what Udis, Udis gives you. I forget. If you steal Nidalee or Elise, do you get... You like, transform. Do you transform? Yes. So okay. if you steal Nidalee, or Elise, or Jace's ultimates, you transform until you use two abilities in rapid succession. Okay. So you can still, you know, play as that character for a while. So you see a lot of them when they go up against Jace's. Transform for a little bit. Yeah. Bane's one is kind of dumb, too. Like <laughs> you get the extra AD movement speed, and then every time you Q, you go invisible, which is pointless because every, <laughs> yeah, every time you... Because you stand still. Yeah, every time you Q as Silas, you're locked in an animation. So by the time your animation's done, you're like, oh, I'm back! <laughs> Teemo's one is pretty dumb, too. We got to see that. Yeah, you know, you get... I think it's three shrooms to put down. There's still some really good abilities for him to steal in the late game. None crowd control worthy. Thresh's one scales very well with ability power, so Henry can steal that. I think the Lu calling would also do pretty yep. well with the AP. Lucian skill, sc uh, scales very well with ability power, so does Akali, and that provides mobility as well. Ragnarok is still one that he can always look towards if he needs that extra crowd control. So just pretty much the, the lane he's in is the worst thing you could possibly get. Yeah. He's not going to be really able to use it in lane. No. He already did. And it was just like, what, what, what the hell are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Take a quick look here. Down in bot lane, looks like White Wing and Potato have started to equalize a little bit as far as the pressure goes. They're only now down 9 to 10 CS. Looking a lot better than what we saw in the early levels. And Sake just going to bring the Golem over to the Sleepy Time Trouble Bubble. I want Project Fishing here. Rich is going to rotate over. There's been some decent ward coverage come out from Danator. Alves has been having a tough time getting into the jungle. He is going to get hooked out here. Flay back, losing this amount of damage. That Olaf, though, he got to be careful here. Sleep does connect on to the Braum. Calling going to come out. Rich uses the box. It's going to force out a flash. Ignite is ticking on down. Reengage, though, coming back from Armored Project. But Potato's going to get taken down. K-Star over toward the left side. Got to be careful here, bud. You're going into a 1v3. Now Archney wants to re-engage. Has flash available. Wants to Connect, not going to find it onto Henry. K Star goes over the wall with the blasting cone, but that will be the end of the fight here. Slop. As they only get the Brom. Sloppy fight, but you can see that Sick as well as Rich understand the limitations, even though Rich got pulled backwards, was able to flash over the wall for safety. Uh, whereas Potato just straying a little bit too far forward. Our project. I think they should clean up that fight. That was one of the, the good fights that they could have taken here against Detonator. They had the upper hand. Um, and it would have been a good way for them to swing the bottom side of the map in their yeah. favor, especially with Colden Feet being this far ahead top side. Because the issue here, during that entire fight, bot lane ended up pushing into Denator's tower. And they're so just going to freeze that wave. They'll just freeze it, and now the Lucian's back up 20 CS. Yeah. Picking up a nice CS lead. This is why we like to watch K-Size, one, one of the best AD carries in the LST when it comes to laning phase. 
can see Sega just having a hard time. You can't really trade against Colin Feet. Colin Feet's got the Seeker's Arm Guard, so yeah. plenty of armor to negate the damage that will come out from Reddington in these trades. And then it has the Vamp Scepter as well, so that Akali gets the extra healing. It's very hard for Sega right now, especially with being a full level down, almost 25 CS down too. Just got to at least get up into that wave and clear it out here. Once again, very early Rift Herald coming out here from Danator. I've been seeing a lot of the top teams actually in LST prioritize the Rift Herald a lot more than what I've been seeing in yeah. other regions. I think Rift Herald is probably one of the best neutral objectives to take early because even if you're just getting an Infernal Dragon early on, it's not going to do you all that much. Whereas getting a Rift Herald very early, that can break a turret. And what we've seen from wind so far is you can break two and it even punishes lanes that are already far behind. Like this lane between Cold and Feet and Sega, Sek just come up top lane, throw down the Rift Herald. That's going to be a free turret. And if Rankton doesn't back off, that could be a dive as well. Uh, I disagree with the timing here. Yeah, it's a little healthy, that turret. It should, no, they just should have waited for the minion wave. Yeah. Uh, Sek's going to be able to deal with this perfectly fine. So that's just for turret plating. All right. I disagree with how they used the Rift Herald there. There was a much better opportunity, especially with Zoe being able to push out the wave and try and go for a dive top. That puts Detonate in a bad spot because now they can be dove bot lane. Yeah, you saw three, four members now down here. Predator's going to be popped. Alves does have the ultimate available. Culling's going to come out. We also got yourself the redemption underneath the tower. It's going to be the one kill. Potato, though, is taking a lot of damage. Has to use the stopwatch. Here comes Golden Feet, though, on the Akali. Wants to try and pick up some kills. Smite's going to come back on down. Jumps on in. Finds his target is Henry, and now K-Star is going to flash in with the piercing light. You got the Zoe coming down as well. Paddlestar is not going to find its target, but in the end, it's going to be a double kill, and three members for Armor Project fall into an Infernal Drake. Those were some really cool series of events that helped out Detonator there. First, Archney was able to pick up a very, very random redemption. Very threw random. the redemption down before the fight started, which meant that Rich understood, okay, I've got some space to maneuver here. I can play around this redemption throughout my ultimate and be the sacrificial lamb. Forcing Potato use the stopwatch. And yeah, Corner Feet missed quite a few of his abilities that went in at an awkward timing, but still able to pick up that kill. That's a dead crocodile. Sorry, Sega, but goodbye. Yeah, he got ignited, so even with his ultimate, didn't really get a whole lot back. Yeah. But and then the follow-up coming up with Dead Dana was very nice. Immediate teleports coming down, trying to get into the back lines, committing to the fight. Uh, and again, even though Colin Feet missed quite a few of his abilities, he still picked up a kill and allowed K-Star to get enough damage down to pick up one in return. Sick, you gotta be careful here, bud. Oh, gets a safety. Rich with a beautiful play coming up from top lane. We're just playing very well here. Rich has been the MVP for me so far. His Thresh plays have been very nice to watch. Look the combo there too, because we saw K-Star just teleported up into top lane yep. as like an assassin Lucian. <laughs> And that now forces Armor Project to have to respond here because you still have White Wing in the bot lane. He's going to come up here shortly, but I don't know if he'll get here in time to save this tower. No, and Detonate have already acquired a nice 4,000 gold lead for themselves. Just 14 minutes into the game, they're on, they're, they're on track to have a very clean finish here against Armor Project. Unfortunately, Armor Project, they're not doing too many things wrong. They're just falling behind. Oh, you stole the... He did you it stole again. stole the Zoe's ultimate. Still has it. Uh, Henry. Gotta be careful here, bud. You got Colton Feet coming nearby. Henry's gonna go for the all in. He's gonna get taken out. <laughs> Colton Feet comes in, picks up the assist for himself. Alvis is also in trouble. Ragnarok was popped here by Sec to try and chase him down. But I don't think Armor Project have done too many things wrong. They've just been outclassed in the lane. The rotations have been outclassed as well. Their actual strategy in terms of where they're going to attack at what point in time has been the detonator's favor. So I, I wouldn't be too disheartened by this game if I was our project. I mean, they're not out of it yet, but it is a very drastic lead just 15 minutes in. So see. it would be, yeah, 5,000 gold ahead is pretty difficult to come back from. Uh, but I would just go back and say, well, how can we clean up these early game plays? Because that fight around Dragon, probably their best bet to try and swing the game in their favor. And top lane, what's going on with Sega's Renekton? This is one of his comfort picks. How is he falling behind against Akali so early on? Got a rough one here. Rich trying to land the hook. Not going to find it, though. Arshani does have a flash available off a pickup here, so we could see maybe an engage off a bubble. Oh. Just going to use it there for a little extra damage. Picks up a smite as well. Next mountain, Drake, coming shortly. We do see Danator starting to apply some pressure here. You broke open the top lane tower now. Multiple members are going to try and apply pressure toward elsewhere on the map. 
the Sea Armor Project. They just want to try and defend the bot side jungle, clearing out some of the vision that's laid down here so Denator aren't getting too much information. But still, you're at a 5,000 gold lead at 16 Ooh. minutes. You're still feeling comfortable. Very comfortable for Detonator. Wow. Alvis is fishing for Predator ganks whenever he can find or one of his Predators off cooldown. Haven't seen too much from this Skarner. Yeah. Early game just farming up. Has been looking for these mid-game picks, but it's been very telegraphed and Detonator are playing around it very well. They've even got the champions. Like, just look at everyone on side of Detonator. Everyone except for Archony has good ways to play around this, the Skarner, you know, ganks and picks, but... Even Archie himself just throws out a sleepy trouble bubble and says, go to sleep, stupid sc scorpion. I'm going to run away. See some items starting to come online, too, for everybody. You got that gunblade, like you mentioned, on this Akali now. Also got the warrior enchant completed. Gold efficiency on that upgrade is insane. Going to have loons complete, too, here for Archie, as, long, as well as the Bork. We'll see a QSS coming out here very early for Rich. Infinity Edge is also then completed here for White Wing. So more just raw damage here on the Tristana. Doesn't have as much survivability. Going to be very much relying on the rocket jump to get out of harm's way. I really like the early QSS from Rich. That just says, you know what? I need to protect my team. Lantern's a really good way to do so. And I'm a really easy pick for Skarner. Mm -hmm. Especially when his Moby Boots are down. His mobility is not very high. Can't run away from Skarner very well. And squishy support pick. QSS just a nice an option for Alves to attack. Uh, making it, you know, he, it's already so hard for him to attack Akali, to, a to attack Olaf and Lucian. Lucian just provides that out of safety, so it kind of shuts down the Skana pick very easily. And it's one of the reasons why champions like Skana, Malzahar, come into the meta in waves. It's because one item just completely nullifies the big ultimates. And on top of this, too, when you're this far ahead, you don't mind paying that little bit of what we would call yes. the tax for that item, because you're already going to make up that gold advantage usually off the next fight. Yeah. Mound Drake has spawned up here. Armored Project, good look for their second one, but Mound Drake never feels that great when you're behind. Nope. And we do see the Olaf going to try and just take that out. We'll see if Armored Project wants to fight this. They do have a ward, so they do know where Detonator is. Dragon going down to about 3,000. Oh, Bubble connects already onto Alves, and that's going to be enough to secure the Dragon here for Detonator, picking up their second one of the game. Yeah, simple secure of the dragon coming out from Detonator. Ooh. Ooh. Rich wanted to go for something there. Just holding the wave ascent. They just go back to farming. I mean, you've got the 1 3 1 split. All after him to continue to farm. You just park Kesar and Rich in the mid lane. Allow Colin Feet to push out top. Allow Archie to push out bottom lane. Just rinse and repeat time for Detonator. Susie Potato here. Coming around the corner. Wants to hit that Winter's Bite, but still not going to connect there. Kesar. Gets back to safety with the quick dash. We see Sega still kind of... Sega's been a little bit isolated here. He keeps having to back through the jungle. Doesn't really seem to have an identity where he needs to go. We'll see him head down toward the bot lane to answer the push that's going to come out from Coldfeet, as that is their other bastion here, as far as the side lane goes. Still has the there's, out of tier tower. There's just not much he can do. Putting... Putting Cold of Heat bottom lane makes sense now. It's almost 20 minutes. So if if you see Alves go towards the bottom side of the map, suddenly you're going to have a teleport from Cold of Heat going straight towards Baron. And Sek has the opportunity to go and try and get a gank down there. Just oh. burning the ultimate. He runs straight back through the jungle and says, well, job's done. Cold of Heat can now go one-on-one -on -one against this Renekton in, in the bottom lane. Good look here. As we approach 20 minutes, we're going to have Baron join us onto the map. With Denator already with a pretty massive lead. He also got the Infernal Drake that he got very early on in the game with that Mound Drake. It's going to assist them actually burning that down faster, especially when you have a Bork on Lucian too. It's a free turret being picked up in the bottom lane, but that's two players with no teleport bottom side of the map for Detonator. If Armor Project had any opportunity to attack top lane, mid lane, or even Baron, now would have been the time, but... Happy feeding all over the map, not sure what they're meant to do, and they go back to farming. So free, free objectives are being taken by Detonator, increasing their lead. Yeah, you take a look at the gold raking too. You got all three of the carries here <laughs> for the side of Detonator. Actually, might as well make it four. Sega's the only one up there that's actually higher than, say, the mid lane for Detonator. Alves, once again, going to use it. Henry steals away the ultimate. Still not going to be able to, though. 
Does Henry actually follow through on the chains, or does he get teleported back if he Teleported connects? back. He yeah, always gets so teleported back. Even if you, you do... get the stun, but you get teleported back. Yeah. Ooh, Rich in trouble. Oh, Rich. Forced to use the QSS immediately, but the turnaround, oh White Wing, he ended up getting bubbled, and that's going to be the kill going over to Colmfeet. And the Akali able to strike down the Tristana. Alves underneath his tower. Stopwatch is going to be used, but guess what? He got four members there. Double kill, and Sega, what are you doing? Oh, no. You're going to get taken down, too. Oh, no. Who's this? Teleport also coming out from Henry now. Archity gets down to about 300 health. He will survive, but... A nice dive coming out here from Dan Nader, and Henry's got to be careful. And that's just scary. You think you have Rich there, and as soon as White Wing pushes forward, he's dead. Very nice sleepy trouble bubbles from Archie. We're able to were able to secure two of the four kills oh, they got geez. during that fight. And Henry, he needs to be careful too. Oh no, Henry! Got good damage. Oop. Oh, I got beautiful. him! Beautiful comes out with the shuriken and just survives with the stopwatch. Oh, no. Cold feet. I don't think he can get away. <laughs> that easily he's gonna get taken down that was a big shutdown going into the Tristana but meanwhile top side of the map you have Denator taking home the Baron. Doesn't matter if it's a shutdown because that lead's gone from 5,000 to 10,000 in just Woo! a couple of plays. This is firmly in Detonator's court there and they are styling on Armor Project right now. That Akali play was beautiful. Just getting the Shuriken on to both times too because as that tower went down in the first tier Henry was already tagged, and he didn't respect the fact that the Akali's just going to dive you if you got no tower. <laughs> and that's the fight that we kind of saw the end of here. So, like you mentioned, now Dan Nader having themselves a 10,000 gold lead. On top of that, you have an Infernal from earlier, so that's only going to multiply yep. the extra bit of a damage that you're going to have already from the bonus of your items. And if you're Dan Nader now, you're feeling very comfortable. I just like to see this about the map. Colin, if he can go top side, try and push this out with Baron. Everyone else can group up in the bottom lane and just allow Kesar to park mid lane for a bit until you decide what to do. And then group up with everyone else bottom side, take another turret, even push through the tier two turrets in the bottom and top lane to get kills. This firmly in Detonator's favor. They just have to hammer it home. I'm a project guy in a very tough situation. You know, Trisana is waiting for item break points at 50% crits, not enough. You need 75 before she becomes a threat in the late game as a brawler glove, so that helps a bit, but just not online just yet as Trisana. I see Danator also having themselves dragon control if they want to go ahead and pick up this Cloud Drake that just spawned up. Colmfeet, because he did die at the end here, there actually isn't any Baron buff on him available. We'll see if Alves is actually able to find himself oh. the connection there. Predator's being popped. Colmfeet, oh, oh my <laughs> god! Just rips both of them apart in the 1v2! Alves, you can run, bud, but Colmfeet's going to try and hunt you down here. Should be able to finish this one off. Nice job with the Shuriken. Closes the gap. Wins the 1v2. That was beautiful. Using the Shroud at the right time. Doesn't get pulled back by the Skarner ultimate. And then just styles them. Jukes around inside the Shroud. Waits for all the abilities to be used blindly. And gets the double kill in a one-on-two. Fantastic play coming out from Colmfeet. He's 8-1-3 and three now. Oh, potato. Gets caught out in his jungle by the bubble. Kill goes on over to Archney. We see Sake a little aggressive. Whoa. Oh, full culling on to White Wing, forcing out the that. heal. K Star gets back to safety. They got a barrened up minion wave here in the bot lane. This should be the inhibitor tower. Henry steals away the calling. What are you going to do, bud? You got an Olaf running to right towards you. His calling's going to come out, gets a decent amount of damage, but does not have the ability to reposition. Ended up using the dash a little earlier during the fight. And another sleepy time. Trouble Bubble is going to connect onto its target. Henry does get popped by the Loon's proc. Sega is going to get ignited. He's going to get taken down. Rich is going to be the one getting the kill credit. And Denator, once again, can just restart this fight, restart the push, and take the inhibitor. Yeah, this is just a really solid push coming out from Death they increase their goal lead from 5,000 to 10,000 off of one play. And right after that, they're able to break the base against Armor Project. This entire time, by the way, they don't even need Colden Feet, who is the most fed player on their team, just pushing top sides. Going to try and go in with the Predator. They find the kill onto the Zoe, but another re-engage comes out from Rich on the Thresh. Able to find the hook, and they trade one for two. And again, another Baron up minion wave going to start crashing. <laughs> 
toward the Nexus Tower. Alves, he gets the home guards. He's coming back in. Colfi just going to go for the dive. They find themselves the ace, and Sega respawns. He wants to feed himself to war because Sake is actually going to survive on the Olaf, and now Sega's going to get taken down. K-Star's just added to his total. Full culling going to connect here onto Potato, a very late exhaust. Even underneath the tower, he gets a triple <laughs> kill with the triumph, and that is going to be another Aww. ace. Danator, they just keep... You know, they keep, they're on the assembly line. They say, bring the parts over to us. We just want more on our KDAs. It's 3 to 22. White Wing says, I'll help out too, my bud, as he ends up finding the kill. But that will be the end of game one. Yeah, Rich even buys a BM Zonyas at the very end of that match. <laughs> uh, it's just a clinical victory that's come out of Detonator there. I mean, Armor Project, unfortunately, throughout the match, were making these very minor mistakes, and they were outclassed in the lane itself. I mean, hmm. Best example was watching Cold of Fiend on Akali against Sega's Rennington. You can't fall down that easily in the solo lane and get punished so aggressively for it at the same time. So, well played coming out from Detonator. They reacted to the draft very well, got some really comfortable picks to go up against Armor Project. And as soon as they got a 5,000 gold lead, you can see they knew exactly what their strategy mm -hmm. was going to be to increase that from 5,000 to 10,000. And once they had that 10,000 lead, well, it's a game over there. They're just able to push through. Yeah, through yeah. Because, uh, well, it gets to the point that Colton feeds, you know, 1v2ing your jungle in top lane. That's when it's over. That's when it's over. Because that was one of the last <laughs> things that Armor Project could throw at Detonator and say, right, that's a reasonable way for us to get back into this. Go kill Colton Feet, get the shutdown, use that to transition into a fight later and try and pull it back slightly here and there. But, I mean, well played. That was a really good game for both Rich and Cold and Feet, in my yeah. opinion. I mean, Archie had a solid game on Zoe. He was, I mean, everyone really stood out. I, everyone stood out in that game. Yeah. Sek didn't have a bad game. He played very well. k had a good game. But to me, it's really Cold and Feet, Rich, and then Archie, who stood out the most, like really yeah. stepping up to carry in this match. Yeah, because Rich's lane presence there on the Thresh, it was pretty unmatched there against the Rom. Potato couldn't really do a whole lot there. And you slowed down the growth of that Tristana, it delays Armor Project's win condition, yep. and then they just steamrolled ahead. Yeah, very well played. Um, I am excited to see what they're going to do in game two. Armor Project really need to go back yeah. and look at that because, again, they were just outclassed in the laning phase and they were making these very micro mistakes. That fight at Dragon, that should have been the, the first fight they had, should have been theirs. Cold mm -hmm. also should not have been able to get that solo, uh, sorry, the, the kill onto Sega topside. That should have been Sega's matchup to try and win, or potentially, you know, even just go even there, but not able to hold their own in that solo island and losing that early Dragon fight just set up the snowball for Detonator. And I think our project need to go back and take a look at what went wrong there. Yeah, because I, I, I like the idea from Armor Project. I think if they wanted to flex pick that Tristana, it might have been a little early in the game to be doing that too, in that draft, because it was a first pick Tristana. Yeah. Is that necessarily going to be, you know, your most optimal priority you want to show off in the draft there? Or do you want to get something a little bit more of the comfort pit early on or something that's a little bit more meta? Take a look here. This was the um, little bit of a pick up here on the he potato. Hex flash over the wall? What? Yeah, a Sake was running uh, Hex flash, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this was just this was just a simple fight. Like this was just over because you already had, you know, White Wing being pushed out. This is after Brom and Scarno were already taken down. So it's just a simple run through coming out from Detonator. Yeah, and even then you saw K Star got himself a full culling onto White Wing after that pickup too. Which pretty much meant, okay, yeah, Tristana's got to go back to base. She has to heal up. And then the rest here from our project, they're like, it's a 4v4. We're getting poked out. We're going to still try and fight? And the, even then, Sega just getting a, another great hook coming out from Rich. It was desperation fights. I mean, at this point, Armor Project needed to collect themselves and say, we're going to sacrifice everything until we have five members. Cold of Feet's not here. Let's use that four-second timer that, that um, Teleport has and try and pick a four and five. But instead... They just went one by one into the group of four against Detonator, so it was never a fight that was in favor of our project. They never had the turret to help them, they never had the numbers advantage, they never had the upper hand, but they still went for these fights and just allowed Detonator to tear them apart piece by piece and close out the game nice and simple. I mean, when you go, when you're in that position as Armor Project, it's already very hard. You can't criticize them for, you know, trying something, but in those situations where you're 10,000 gold behind or already in your base and your composition is not online to deal with it, you need to throw the Hail Mary pass. And the Hail Mary pass right there is five members. Mm -hmm. You get a turret or even two turrets involved, and you attack either Cold and Feet 
on the Akali, or you go and attack that four-man squad and hope you get a big team fight for yourself, sacrifice some turrets and some of your base to pull back the goal lead. You can't go one by one. You can't just trickle in and expect something to work for you. Yeah, so, you know, coming off that game now, that was game one, Denator's favor, as you guys can see at the bottom right there. And again, standout performances once again coming out from Colton yeah. Feet and Rich. We're going to go ahead and take a short break. When we come back, though, it's going to be game two of our first series.